Hello again, it's Ben with Studio on the Lake. This is uh, part two of finishing the, the baby bird. And uh, you've seen this portion already. Uh, that is the finished bird. And uh, this video is going to take you through the burning of the feathers, the layout of the feathers, and uh, pretty much overall uh, finishing of this character. If you haven't seen part one, it goes into um, takes this guy all the way through the groupings of the of the feather patterns and that sort of stuff on the end you, you could certainly leave the bird without the burning if you don't have a burner um, or you could uh, texture this with a um, a burr or a stone and in future videos I'll, I'll show you a little bit of that because some of the decoys have that going into them so that's pretty much where we left him last time and we had uh, roughed out the feather groupings but now we're, we're up to the point where I've got my uh, trusty uh, ruby sapphire a ruby or sapphire I forget I probably ruby is what it is a flame burr and I'm just gonna go around in this case the cheek and the head and you'll see the rest and, and just round over those uh, cut marks where I delineated each feather grouping this is a made-up bird. Um, he looks a, a lot like a sparrow. You could probably turn him into a chickadee if you really wanted to badly with the painting or with the burning in, in this case, since this guy's gonna get no paint. So I'm taking the V out of the middle of his back. That's where his wings kind of stand a little bit proud of the rest of the body. You can see that the uh, left wing there is uh, overlapping the right wing. I'm not trying to take this down uh, perfectly. I'm just st sticking within the silhouette and the outlines of the shape and just kind of smoothing it a little bit uh, in, in preparation for laying out or for cutting the feathers in. You, I, I want the feathers to, to uh, have little bumps and ridges in them and not be completely smooth and plastic looking. You can see that feather on the left side has, has three groupings basically to it. One is a coverlet in the front where the wings are tucked up under and then if they were to be extended you'd have the central portion of the wings in the middle and then the wing tip uh, feathers on the, on the end there. And this is as good a time as any since the uh, first burning I'm going to do is on the head. I'm going to go ahead and delineate this beak just a little bit more and where it comes down and meets in the head. At this point I, I don't want any really sharp lines with the exception of on his beak and, and obviously the end of the tail. The concept of this guy is you, you hold him in your hand, set him on your hand and show him to someone and uh, he reads as a soft fluffy, uh, not quite a baby bird, because if you've ever looked at uh, really young baby birds when their feathers are just starting to come in, they're, they're not a pretty sight particularly. But uh, once they get most of their feathers in and they're just short of being able to fly, they're, they're uh, light and fluffy. If you've ever tried to, to carve a baby duck, a realistic baby duck chick or a chicken uh, uh, or duck chick, You'll find that's really difficult to do because their their feathers aren't necessarily feathers. They're little uh, fluffy down, and that is the hardest thing to get to to read and, and best done with paint, as opposed to trying to delineate. But once they start to have a little definition in the feathers, then you can uh, come back, and uh, this technique will work very well. When, you, when you, we get to uh, a little further down the road, in the first video I talked about uh, the series that I'm gonna do uh, throughout this year on birds, shorebirds, uh, decoys or ducks, a hawk, a crow, and uh, probably finish that up with an eagle or something along those lines. 
maybe even throw a swan or a goose in there somewhere, you'll get to see full feathers carved. Um, I have done some feathers in the past, so if you want to go ahead and subscribe and uh, start looking back through the videos, there's 140 give or take videos in there, and I do go through how to carve a feather. There's a couple of individual feathers in that were carved, including an eagle feather that was in the yard last year. So there's the tip of the wings, and the little V that I'm delineating down there is the one that's underneath, in other words, the right wing underneath of the left wing. I left a lot of this in without uh, real heavy editing, although this is probably two, two and a half hours, um, boiled down to about 30 minutes. So there you have him, and he's looking quite a bit like a bird. And once again, if you if you run him in a silhouette, you can see what you're doing. So now I'm going to go back and and. And uh, I'm just doing this portion outlining the major feather groups for the, the purpose of the teaching on this. And, and then in a second here, you're going to see me come back and put in flow lines. Flow lines being the direction that I want these uh, small feathers to go. So there's the delineating the major groups once again. And here come the flow lines. So it's going to come down and then up over the top of his head and, and it's going to frame out that eye kind of in a circular motion. These will all eventually get carved away. There's a little better example of what I'm up to. So now this is a, a, a ball, diamond burr and I'm taking small strokes, kind of a left and right, as if I were putting in feathers. And uh, what I'm, I'm trying to do is leave little bumps all along here. And uh, just like most of the videos I do, you know, this is at two and a half times the speed. And uh, I'll show you the initial and slow motion, and then I'll show you the rest of the work at uh, two and a half times the speed. And like I said, in this one I left quite a bit of the material in because this is a, a teaching uh, video. And I wanted you to see. But what this does is leaves little ridges, and when I come back over with the burning pen, uh, those ridges kind of remain and further uh, help the feather effect. Now I could do this with a stone that has a little bit of a sharp edge on it, a ceramic stone, and, and actually paint over it. Because you see uh, the little short strokes that I'm taking on this uh, actually would be uh, read as feathers if I were to paint it. And you see the directions that I'm kind of running on across the cheek there. And you can actually see the little little ridges that I'm, I'm leaving on that guy. And I am going to work this guy in sections. I'm going to I'll work on his head and then I'll work on a, a one of the wings and work my way back uh, down on into the tail and then uh, you won't get to see it but I'll finish the the right hand side the, the behind there uh, off camera so I'm gonna put my reference lines back in that's where the cheek and the uh, forehead or the top of the head are delineated and uh, I'm once again putting in some flow lines. This will be the first point when I pick up the burner where I really start to delineate the beak down. I, I haven't done the carving on the beak, even though it, it's, it reads pretty well as it sits. But uh, once I get these feathers that where they come down and delineate the edge of the beak, then I can come back at, at, at a little later in the video and show you uh, 
how I finish off the beak. So uh, I've got a uh, spear, a very sharp spear point on uh, that that burner. That burner is part of my Optima combo burner pin set one of two that sit over there. And this this is a, a spear point, I believe, a number five, if you're asked and asking on that. And it's a really fine. And I honed it so that it was uh, pretty much razor sharp. And I'm running it on about six, between five and six. And it's a light, very light touch, just like a pencil. And this is, this is where I start delineating in the beak and the head will, the feathers on the head will come down and meet the beak. I'm also setting in the bottom of the eye socket where the cheeks and the, the, the forehead uh, kind of meet. And here we go, time to go to work. So I'll start in the center and I'm just lightly working little small uh, feathers that would stick up. Just the ends of the feathers would stick up and each one would go back in the other. Uh, if we were to magnify this quite a bit, they would, they would look a lot like fish scales. Scales and feathers, whether on a scales on a dragon or a fish and feathers on a bird uh, have a tendency to stay the, or, be built the same way. One lays over top of the other in a tiled effect. And I'll continue this up, up over the head and I'm following those flow lines that I drew in there earlier. As it comes across the top of the head and moves down towards the back, you'll notice that these feathers uh, start to getting a little bit larger. There's nothing worse than, uh, he would look quite plastic if we were to put the same exact same size feathers in him across. Now, so uh, to show you a little bit of what I was doing, here's a, a deal that I noticed I got carried away with on the burn lines. These are what I'm putting in right now in a micro uh, version. So you can imagine that those are the tips of feathers and then the feather shape outline. And uh, I'll take a couple minutes here and I'll show you how I set these feathers up. Now, I don't do this this, this way each time. I would normally have most of these feathers, uh, especially if they were this large, uh, they would already be cut, undercut, and then shaped uh, with the stones before I came back in and burned. But I'm, I'm trying to show you what I was doing uh, on the top of his head in a version that's about, oh heck, 20 times larger than, than what I'm, I'm after on the other. And those would be the barbs in the center of the feathers. And then you would come back and, and uh, that would be the high point. And this is uh, real time and not speeded up. I'll, I'll try to mention when I speed up, I'll, although I think you'll probably be able to figure that out. So each side of those feathers uh, would have a left and a right side coming away from the barb. And you're not going to get a real good example of this on this because I'm, I'm doing it quickly and I'm, I'm just trying to demonstrate what I'm up to on the top. Here's the secret. This brass brush takes away a lot of the char on this guy. And it, it shows the lines that I cut in there. If my camera would stay focused. And I... I rinse and repeat, so I'm, I'm going to do a little bit of work uh, with the burner delineating the feather outlines again. I'll come back over and with a stone, I'll burn them again, or a stone, not a stone, uh, a burr, and then I'll burn them again, and I'll do this several times 
so on some of the bigger decoys I might burn over one particular area or feather grouping uh, five or six different times uh, two or three hours worth of burning on each particular uh, section. And once I've gone over it one time, I, I go ahead and take that brass brush and take it out. Now you see I've got a burr in there, and now I'm doing what I would normally, on a bigger feather like this, this would have been the first step as opposed to the other step, but I, I thought I'd go ahead and finish this out for you since I'm, I'm doing this in, in micro on the top of his head. And obviously the, the feather would be um, a little bit sticking a little bit proud out towards the ends and then as it goes in to meet the other feather it would uh, be underneath that. Coming back and, and I'm actually kind of undercutting each of the edge of, ends of those feathers. And you can see the, the nice thing about not doing these uh, to a perfect pattern. They're not supposed to be snake scales that are that are perfect, uh, graduated, going down, uh, or that sort of thing. Each one has a little bit of a characteristic to it. I am keeping the line, the burning lines, a little bit closer. I, I've read stuff on how close on a, a lot of these feathers, and some of them will say a thousand. Uh, thousand burn lines per inch and I honestly think if you if you really were to get a microscope and, and look down in there it'd be you'd be hard-pressed to get a thousand strokes side by side on on this guy uh, when you're doing feathers You'll see me do this several times on the bird. I'll come back with the uh, um, with the, the brass brush and, and take stuff off. And if you were to go over and over and over this and, and not be in such a hurry as I was, yeah, you kind of get the idea uh, how we're going to end up with feathers on this guy. So we're back. Little minute feathers going all the way around. And this is uh, two and a half times the speed. I am working my way from the, the front of this guy uh, to the back.
you can you can actually see that I'm I'm kind of laying those feathers out along uh, those flow lines that you can barely see that I put in there earlier, and then I'm kind of stopping at the ends of them where the uh, the different feather groupings. In other words, the head comes down into the coverlets there. All right, and then uh, here we go. Here's the what it looks like before the brush, and this takes off a lot of it, and you can actually see what you've got. Um, you can't completely erase the the burn marks, but you can you can get a lot of them to come down. And I, I'll go over this another one or two times uh, throughout the video. So there's that, and I'll uh, I'm going to quit jabbering and, and uh, let let the rest of this run seven or eight minutes, and, and then I'll come back in again at the end of this and uh, uh, pick up with the voiceover.
So there he is. He's all all complete. And what you saw me do in the middle there, if you're looking, I, I burnished his his uh, uh, beak a little bit there on the carving. The rest of it should be self-explanatory. And the goal is to make him look like a real bird from a little bit of a distance away. And you set him in your hand. I, I was real pleased with the way he came out. I did a little bit more carving on the left-hand side there because i that's he's facing out to me and uh, I, I didn't do quite as much finish work on the on the back side there but you certainly could get away with uh spend more time so hey thanks a lot subscribe by all means and uh, i'll get back to you on some of these other videos thanks a lot this has been ben with studio on the lake